Hello, it's another Friday afternoon. I'm preparing my Saturday morning video uh, in a different room of my house in a different chair, but I've got my same cat on my lap and my same mind thinking about the same kind of language learning type of questions that I often discuss with you. And today's topic is in the title. Is it a good idea to study two or more languages at once? This is a question people are always asking in the language learning community. Uh, I've addressed it many times in different videos, but I don't have a title like this. So maybe people can refer to this in the future to get my thoughts on it. Um, I do not have a set answer. There is no set right or wrong. One size fits all. Yes, it's a good idea. No, it's a bad idea. It depends upon you, your circumstances, and the languages you're trying to learn. Uh, so there are reasons for saying it's a bad idea. There are reasons for saying it's a good idea. I want to try to be as judicial as I can and go through all of the reasons and then leave you to see which of these applies to me the most and whether it's a good idea for you under your circumstances. Um, so you're thinking about learning different languages at the same time and you want to know if it's a good idea. Uh, and even though there is no set answer, you probably will, if you start fishing around, run up fairly soon against what I would call the general common sense uh, idea that no, it's, it's a bad idea. You should not try to learn multiple languages at the same time. You should spend all of your time focused on one language and one language only at a time. Why do people say that? Uh, I think that they have two reasons for saying that. The first reason um, is that learning a language is a hard thing. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and you're never guaranteed of success. And so if you want to have a hope of success, when you set out to do something like that, you need to get serious about it. You need to put all your energy and all your focus into it. And by definition, if you are uh, learning two languages, you're splitting your energy and you're taking time away from the one language and giving it to the other language. And so therefore it's a bad idea. So let's examine that last part of what I just said and see if that is necessarily true, if that's always true, if that's true in your circumstances. That can be true, quite literally, if you are in the habit, say, of um, waking up every morning and studying Hebrew from six to seven, and then you get interested in Swahili, and you say, my Hebrew is good enough, uh, I can cut back my Hebrew from six to 6.30, and then from 6.30 to seven, I'm gonna do Swahili. So you're literally taking 30 minutes away from Hebrew and giving it to Swahili. Maybe you've come to a New Year's resolution, you've cleared away some bad habits, you've found an hour that you can devote to learning foreign languages that you've been talking about and thinking about for a long time, but haven't done it. And so now you're going to take your hour that you've cleared and you're going to try to learn Korean and French and German um, by Asimil methods. And you've got 20 minute chunks for each and it goes well for a while. And then you start to realize Korean is harder than these other languages are. And it's somehow more interesting to me. So um, it's more relevant to me. So it requires more time and I've devoted this hour time to it. So these other two kind of are sucking away my time and energy. And if I want to devote the time that I need to learning this harder language, I need to cut back or, or get rid of these others. So there are cases where this could literally be true. But it could also be the case that you have been um, studying Latin all along and you're quite happy with it. Uh, and then you get the opportunity somehow to uh, know somebody who knows Turkish and then you hear it and you like that and you start doing some Turkish alongside over here. So you have a Latin channel going and a Turkish channel going and you have not taken time away from Latin to give to Turkish, you're just doing both. Under circumstances like that, why could you say that your Turkish is taking time away from your Latin? doesn't make any sense to me uh, any more than you would say, well, in your life, you probably have not stopped everything to learn languages. You probably still keep other hobbies, listening to music, maybe playing music, other forms of rest and relaxation, visiting with your friends, watching movies. So you do other things that you could be devoting time to the serious task of learning a hard language. Um, so it doesn't seem fair to pinhole, pigeonhole another language that you started doing independently and saying it's taking time and energy away from that. I think it is a time comes in the lives of some language learners when you say, uh oh, yeah, maybe um, circumstances have changed. That Swahili that came in just as, as, as a fringe interest has become really relevant now. I work for an organization that uh, has an opportunity for me to go to Kenya in August. It's now the end of April. I need to get to this level to function there. People who come back 
have told me that you're going to be in villages where people only communicate in Swahili, and so you you need it. Um, so I'm only at this level because I've just been doing half an hour a day for a couple of months, and I need to be at this level in three months' time. So. It's not that I just need to cut out my half an hour of Hebrew and give a whole hour to Swahili. I need to dig into my life, reassess all my values, all my activities for the next couple of months, and um, go and you know dig in, find two or three hours that I can plug into all of this. So under circumstances like that, when you're up against a gun, a clock, you have a specific deadline that you need to get to a certain level by a certain time, then it makes sense. Yes, you need to put all of your energy into one thing. It also makes sense, I've said multiple, multiple times, you can start out learning a language in small chunks, 15, 20 minutes, uh, but as you get more advanced, you need to put more and more time into it. And when you wanna go from say intermediate to advanced, that's when you need to put in a full two hours into learning a single language. Um, and at that stage, because you are more advanced, your activity, your studying can be reading a book in that you enjoy or, or conversing or something. So um, it's not such a burden to do that amount of study. But um, if you try to do it at this learning stage, when you're not up a gun, against a gun like this, um, I think that this can turn into an argument for the other side. So let's leave this aside for the moment and go to the other reason why people say that you need to uh, focus just on one language at a time. And that is that there's the, the danger, the risk of mixing your languages up, of confusing them. And I think here some people, maybe they've seen the movie or read the book, The Name of the Rose, and there's this character, Salvatore, who speaks gibberish. In one sentence, he'll start out uh, speaking Latin, and then it'll change into English, and then into German, and then into French, and then into Italian, and you can only understand what he's saying if you're a polyglot. Um, and so um, you don't want to end up like that. Um, confusing languages, mixing languages up, um, it's it's... Some people have this problem, some people don't. There's no reason to think uh, you're necessarily going to have it. There's no reason to think that you're going to overcome it. I think that the real danger, the biggest danger for um, mixing languages up that you might want to consider here is it's probably a bad idea to, if you're a beginning language learner, you don't have a lot of experience and you're going to learn two languages that are very similar and you're going to do it, say, in a school learning context, um, so as a college student signing up for Spanish 101 and Italian 101 at the same time, that, that is a potential recipe for disaster. You're going to come to the end of one of your semesters. You're going to be sitting in your final exam. Um, you, you will have crammed for both of them back to back, and you're going to be tested on your ability to conjugate verbs. And the verbs themselves are very similar in Spanish and Italian. The verb endings are very similar in Spanish and Italian. You might put Spanish verb endings on Italian verbs, Italian verb endings on Spanish verbs. Uh, you might fail both exams, which would make you fail both, um, both classes, which would make you lose your scholarship, which would get you kicked out of school, and you would have ruined your life because you tried to learn two languages at the same time. Barring um, worst case scenarios like this, um, I don't think that this fear of mixing languages up is, is that, um, that realistic uh, of a reason to withhold from learning two languages at the same time if you want to. So let's look at some of the reasons why it might actually be a good idea to learn multiple languages at the same time. And the first one, as I referred to just a moment ago, is that if you take that energy, focus your energy and time on learning a language, put all your energy and time into learning a language, that can actually come over to this side. Because I think that um, you might find, um, again, there are people out there that you know, can put all their time and energy into one thing all the time. But I think most people kind of, you, you come to a saturation point. You come to a, um, a, a point early on, uh, when you say, I can't do anymore, it's, you, you risk burnout at this time. So if you try to put too much effort into, I would call the textbook stage, the beginning learning stage, you know, forcing yourself to do that for three or four hours a day, if that doesn't come naturally to you, that can, you're probably in this if you're watching my videos because you find language learning interesting and fascinating and rewarding and, and all these positive adjectives. Uh, and if you 
uh, try to do too much too soon, you can lose that. You can lose the magic of it and you can take what was um, a fascinating mental exercise and, and, and growth experience and, and turn it into a burden, burnout, and, and not want to do it anymore. Um, so by learning multiple languages, uh, if you've cleared two hours of uh, a day or an hour a day by doing multiple languages, you're giving yourself variety uh, and that is... Um, uh, you will have less of this, this risk of, of burnout, I think. Um, second reason why you might want to consider learning multiple languages at the same time um, is similar to this in a way, where I just talked about variety, uh, but goes beyond that, and that is to a certain type of mind. Not everybody has this kind of mind. Um, I do, and if you like my advice and my videos, you probably do too. Um, if you learn multiple languages at the same time, what you're doing is you're learning in a comparative context. You're giving yourself this incredible neural network of relationships between the languages that you can see connections and differences and ways that they're similar and ways that they're different. Um, and this just makes the whole thing um, more, gives you analogies that you can make and gives you um, this sort of invisible web, spider web that's hanging there that you can hang information on and therefore you can still see it and it will stick. Whereas if you only, you're a native English speaker and you're just learning one language and only one language, by default, your brain thinks that the English way of phrasing things is, is the right way, the correct way, and this other language, one other language does it in a different way. That different way is kind of weird, kind of strange, kind of the English way is right and good. This new language is, is you don't have good adjectives to go with it. It's, it's kind of strange. But if you've got two or three languages going, other languages, you can say, ah, that's interesting. There's so many different ways of, of phrasing this idea. This is similar and that's different. And here these two are similar. Um, and it just gives you this, this web of connectedness that uh, helps you retain information. It's sort of, um, some people get very interested in something like sports and they can retain all this information about the various teams and the various players and their statistics. And they might not be good at that kind of thing with anything else, but because they're interested in, in the whole, they're able to retain the parts better. And so I think that that's something that you can look forward to uh, if you learn multiple languages, if you've got a mind that works well with comparison and contrasting. The final reason uh, is the, I think that the strongest one, uh, and that is the whole idea of learning one language until you're good enough and then being able to learn another one is, seems flawed to me on several grounds. Uh, a, how do you ever know that you're good enough? Uh, learning a language is, is sort of a lifelong journey uh, and uh, you, you never know when you're going to be able to say, oh, I'm, I'm done, I'm fluent, I'm ready to go on. And even if you somehow do feel that way, let's say you want to learn three languages, you have, you have two op op options if you want to learn three languages. You can learn them sequentially, one after the other, which is what the logic of saying no, only one at a time. Or you can learn them simultaneously, all side by side. And I think ultimately, if you want to know three languages, you do want to know them side by side. You want to know them all at the same time. You want to be able to say, I learned three languages, I can use three languages. Um, I don't think you want to say, well, I'm going to spend all my time on language A, and it's going to take me two or three years. I'm only going to do language A. I'm going to put off my desire and interest in language B and C until I get language A up to this level. And then I'm going to say, okay, my language A is good enough, so I'm going to stop language A. I'm not going to touch it or language C yet, but I'm going to put all my energy into language B for the next two or three years. And then once I'm done with language B, I'm going to go on to language C, not touching A or B anymore until I'm done with language C. And so it'll be four or six years down the road uh, and then you're going to go back and say okay now where's my language a at you will have forgotten so much it's just not efficient in in sort of time management and in, in ways of learning it's much more efficient if you want to know ultimately three languages at the same time you should study three languages at the same time so um, these are different ways of approaching the matter these are different ways of of looking at the topic um, there is no set right answer. It depends upon you, your circumstances, and the languages you want to learn. Think about whether you're literally taking time away from one language to learn another. Think about whether you are sort of 
giving yourself, um, whether you're diluting your efforts or whether you're giving yourself the spice and variety that you need to keep your motivation alive and keep the magic of language learning there and uh, make your decision uh, as to whether it's a good idea or a bad idea uh, based upon that. Ultimately, I think that, yeah, there's, the, there's a fallacy underlying the no one language at a time, thinking that somehow, again, that the, the one language is necessarily going to take away from the second language. It's sort of like you can have different relationships with different people or different creatures. If you have a cat, okay, you've got all your cat time, but then maybe you get a dog. And so is the dog going to take away from the cat? Sophie, Sophie, come, come. Yeah, come Sophie, yeah. So then you have a dog and you'll have dog time as well. So you can have dog time and cat time. The dog time is not going to take away the cat time. So uh, the Swahili time doesn't necessarily need to weigh, take away the Hebrew time. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you again next week. Joking.